Hey everyone, it's Pierre. Welcome back. Come on in. Today I'm going to be walking you through replacing the 2230 M2 NVMe 512GB Micron 2400 SSD in the ROG Ally Z1 Extreme. So the stock drive is pretty fast. It's not bad. It has a read speed of 4500, write speed of 1800. It's a PCIe Gen 4 drive, so it's not too bad, but the capacity was kind of low for me. Especially because the ASUS ROG Ally Z1 Extreme can run games at a pretty high level, so the games I want to run on here take up a lot of space. So I decided to look into upgrading the drive, and I'm going to walk you through that entire process here. Before I even get into it, I will let you know that the process is very straightforward, very easy, low level of difficulty. I applaud ASUS for making the drive accessible and not making it a pain in the ass to upgrade it. I'm sure they were assuming people were going to get into it anyway, so thank you ASUS for that. Alright, so what I'm going to do is show you the 3D Mark storage benchmark. Crystal Disk benchmark and loading times for Cyberpunk on the stock drive and then I'm going to repeat the same tests on the new drive. So here's what I'm going to be replacing the stock drive with. It's an Inlin TN446 2230 NVMe M2 Gen 4 SSD. The capacity is 1 terabyte. The read speed is 4700 megabytes per second. Write is 3700 megabytes per second TBW rating is 600 terabytes it is a 3d TLC flash drive I was able to pick it up for under a hundred bucks during some sales I think the regular price is about 160 no storage drives are selling at retail anymore if you look on Amazon I believe this goes for around 110 if you have a micro center around you then it's probably cheaper to go and pick it up but if you don't, then 110 is not bad for this drive, in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and start this benchmark here. You can see it's running the Micron 2400 on the AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme. The GPU is handled by AMD Radeon Graphics, integrated into the APU. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this footage and show you the results. See you in a second. And here are the results for the benchmark. It scored a 1218. Here you can see the individual stats. And there you go. Moving on to the Crystal Disk mark benchmark. And I'm just going to let this run in real time without editing the footage to fast forward it or anything so you can see how long it takes. And then see the results display in real time. If you're not interested in seeing that, feel free to use the timestamps in the video description below to skip ahead to the next section.
And here are the results. Pretty much what I expected to see according to the listed specs for this drive. 4300, 1700, not bad. Moving on to the Cyberpunk benchmark. There we go. Gonna let this guy run. And it was just about 15 seconds there. All right, and lastly, I'm gonna load up a save game. I think just about 11 to 12 seconds there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and install this new drive. Okay, now there are six screws you need to remove one two three four five six pretty easily visible go ahead and do that the bottom left and the bottom right screws are actually longer than the rest and those are the only two that you need to fully remove before prying off the shell and you're going to want to have a pry tool or some kind of soft plastic to pry open the case so that you don't damage so I've got a thermal paste spreader here that I cleaned off. I'm going to use this as my pry tool. And I should be able to pop the case off. So in terms of the shell, I left four of the screws in there. The bottom left and bottom right two screws I left on my magnetic pad there so I don't lose them. But I found it unnecessary to remove all of them. And then if you fold this flat back, you'll see the stock drive, a Micron 2400, 512 gig, Gen 4. So I've removed the inland drive from the packaging. Here it is, it's a one terabyte TN446. Now, I'm gonna fold this back. Unscrew that. Make sure I keep that screw here. Here are the two drives. I'm now going to throw this one in there. Okay. Put that in there. In. Okay. Put the power connector back in. Put the shell back on. And I recommend that you snap the sides in and the top on first. The bottom part will kind of snap in as you fasten all the screws back down. Okay? Don't over torque it, you can damage the plastic or don't over torque it because you can damage the plastic or strip out the screws, okay? So I got this wall stick a long time ago on AliExpress really come in handy for applications like this where there are small screws involved and 
And if you're looking for one yourself, I put a link in the description below. I can't find my magnetic bit set, but that really helps a lot too, because when you're dealing with these small pieces, having that magnetic end is really, really helpful, okay? So, our seams are closed up. Is back to normal. Let's wipe off these fingerprints. So I'm gonna get it plugged in directly to the power source just to make sure it gets all the power it needs and then we'll boot it on. It should automatically boot into the BIOS since the drive is empty. Maybe I'll throw this into one of my next ITF builds or something. It'd be a nice little drive to have. Alright, Ally is starting up. Yep, straight into BIOS. Go into Advanced ASUS Cloud Recovery. Okay. View the policy. I agree. Cloud recovery mode. Successful. Cloud recovery starting now. I'm going to go ahead and rest the device back on the stand here. For the next 15 or 20 minutes, I just let it do its thing. I ended up getting stuck on a screen where it just said checking and the progress bar just kept looping and looping for about 15 minutes, so I decided to restart it. I ended up getting stuck in that checking loop for about an hour. I went online and tried to search solutions. Some people said to update the BIOS, some people said to update my ASUS. A couple different suggestions. The only thing that worked for me was actually hooking it up to the dock and using an ethernet cable to provide access to the internet. So maybe I didn't wait long enough, but for me, the solution that worked was hooking it up to a dock and using an ethernet cable. All right, so once I got it hooked up to the dock, it's actually working. Okay, Windows is now loaded up and I'm going to show you a trick here to bypass the out of the out of the box experience from Windows that forces you to be online and sign in with the Microsoft account. So what you'll do is hit Shift F10 to bring up the command prompt. Click inside the window, start entering an input, and then you're going to type O O B E backslash Bypass NRO. And this time, instead of restricting us to signing in through a Microsoft account, I can choose I don't have internet, continue with limited setup. this stuff, turn off location, turn off family device, turn off diagnostic data, turn off computer typing, turn off tailored experiences, turn off advertising ID, all that shit, turn it all off. Okay, so here we are. Your device is optimized for touch, thank you. Welcome to your first use of armory crate. It's gonna initialize up here. Yeah, I'm gonna have it start up. It's pretty necessary. Normally I don't have things start up like that, but with this, close up. And if you look down here, check that out.
All right, so the drive's installed. I spent some time downloading the benchmark applications as well as Cyberpunk. I'm gonna run 3D Mark here first. All right, that benchmark is wrapping up now. I scored a 1572 here. The stock drive scored a 1218, so there's a pretty big difference there. Close to a 20% better score. And here are the individual numbers. It had better specs, so I expected a better score, and that's what happened. So I'm gonna let the Crystal Disk benchmark run in real time. If you are not interested in seeing how long it takes, feel free to use the timestamps in the video description to skip ahead. Interestingly, the newer drive took longer to complete this test. I don't know if that has any bearing on the performance, but I noticed that. In the Cyberpunk benchmark loading test, the stock drive slightly edged out the newer drive, but I might have left the settings higher on the new one because I just installed it and ran it. I did not change the settings down. Either way, they were within milliseconds of each other, so pretty much a wash. And the last test is loading up a save game in Cyberpunk. The load time difference was negligible, but I think the Micron actually loaded faster. So I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. If you have any technical support, build help, or video requests, go ahead and visit my website, purology.com, and, and you can submit one through one of my forms. If you want to get in touch with me, my Discord link is in the video description and I'm always up for a conversation. My username is Puri. As always, thank you so much for your support. I hope to see you around more often and have a great day. Bye.